Hello there everybody. Welcome back to Classic Large Car Garage. Today we are back on the Freightliner. Been doing a little work off camera. Figured I'd show you guys. You all saw the headlights. Showed you the turn signals, didn't show them on. And then yesterday, did some cab lights. Didn't really film it. Uh, it's pretty standard, just powering the ground. Uh, a little silicone around the holes, new uh, foam gasket on the bottom. Pretty straightforward. Got the turn signals here. They're a little slow, we need to get the uh, LED flasher. But, I'll show you guys. Figured I'd show you guys what it look like as of right now. Converted to LED. Still need to do the rear. We haven't got that far yet. So. I am, today, I am doing a little suspension work. They were, they put a different front axle under this. Not really sure why, but they did. Um, so the, where the U-bolts sit, it was made for a wider spring and uh, leveling block or whatever you want to call it. So the ones original to the truck are a little bit narrower. So there's a little gap in between the block and the U-bolt they were concerned about. Gotta show you what I'm talking about here. This gap here. They were a little concerned about it. So basically what they want us to do is just to build a plate that sits on top of the spring and comes down and just kind of fills that in. Uh, I don't think it's really going to have any purpose other than just to kind of make them feel better. You can see it comes this side of the U-bolt straight down like normal. There's about a 5 8 inch gap here. So don't mind these, these are just temporary so the nut wasn't drawn all the way up. So, I'm on this side now. Got the U-bolts loose. Up top. I made this plate yesterday to sit on top. It sits. Got a little big piece up there. Sorry. This has a hole in it. It will sit on top of that. I just need to make sure it'll fit through the U-bolts and everything else. So I'm gonna find a guy, find a place to stick you guys, and maybe get a little more light down here so you guys can see what's going on too. Hang tight. Alrighty, got you in here. A little bit of dirt schmutz on there. Scrape all that off of here. this has a shock mount on it we're actually going to cut that off and flip this around kind of fits better the shock mount is in the back uh, I think I showed you guys the airbag setup it's got like an air ride type deal so we're going to cut that off it fits better sits better on the back side also, on the back side, since I'm flipping it, because it has this. So this also interlocks with this center pin nut. Keeps it from going anywhere. When it was flipped around the other way, it couldn't go that way, but it could come this way. 
because there's nothing holding it. Since that side is the side that is tight, the U-bolt is tight to the spring and everything, and they're concerned about this gap, I'm flipping it over. That way, I can push it as far as it needs to this way. And since the U-bolt's going to be down tight on that side, it shouldn't want to go that way. So, just need to make sure U-bolts go down, sit tight against everything. be a pain to get in. Let's get the background lines up. Big old pliers here. Just need to squeeze. Little squeeze. Let's go right in. Those are now all the way. This still moves freely. It's not in a bind, so that's good. So now, now I know that plate will fit this side. So I can make a second one. And then we will figure out what we got to put in here. I said it's about a 5 8 gap. I think we're going to put a little piece of half inch in there. I say little. A uh, piece of half inch in there. Uh, we were going to call around. We don't have any on hand. We we're going to call around a little bit. See if we can get some scrap pieces laying around somewhere, somewhere. From somebody, somewhere. <laughs> so, I guess I will see you guys over by the vise. And we'll get this piece cut off. And we'll get to marking one of these out.
right, well, now we have two. Clamp them together, ground them down, make sure they're both the same size. Make them look as uniform as possible. Little notches. Go around the U-bolts. So, now we just need to test fit it. Make sure it works. And we need to figure out what we're going to use for the half inch size. We have quarter. Really don't want to weld two pieces of quarter together. So, that's where we're at right now with these. Alrighty, new day at Classic Large Car Garage. Um, we have some half inch strap now. We got a uh, stick of it, sheet, flat stock, whatever you want to call it. We will use that for these plates. But as you can tell, I've been working on it a little bit off camera. Uh, today is what well, would be the 27th. Two days after Christmas, we were here yesterday, uh, just kind of test fitting some stuff, making sure everything was going to work. So I did a little bit of work, jacked it up, got the wheels off, got them over here. We got the goose ball mount, we got it hung up here on the cherry picker, it's a pretty nice unit, sits on top of the frame rails bolts in place uh, do I operate this here turn this and it releases the ball got some grease on it so you can flip it over and that way it's kind of flush and it's got that little thing you can pick it up if you need to turn that lock it back in place so had it yesterday, got it up here, measured it out, got the deck plate up here, pretty cool unit from Merit, Merit, however you say it, it's a pretty cool uh, deal, it actually, it's in a couple different pieces here, but it's like modular, it's got like a little uh, groove, tongue and groove, I don't know if you'd necessarily be a tongue and groove, but just kind of slides together, make it different lengths, different applications. So for up here, I think this is six, six sections, I think. And then we'll have the gooseball mount. It sits on top of the frame, comes to about here. We have another two pieces of deck plate here. Here's the uh, <clears throat> company Dyna Deck. Pretty nice, actually. Um, you, like I said, this is two pieces, like over there, and then to finish it off, it has its own little. Uh, kind of its own I don't know what you want to call it like an edge clean up the edge make it look a little better and it just slides over all of it it has a groove cut into each one and it just slides on also so these two panels will be on the back of the truck and then the mount, like I said, mount will be here. Rest of the deck plate looks really nice, actually. When it's all put, excuse me, looks really nice once it's all put together. So, uh, marked the holes yesterday. Got them drilled out to a half inch. Three on each side, big three-quarter inch bolts. So, got a big three-quarter inch reamer. On the air drill there, I will set you guys up, do some reaming, and figure I'd bring you along for the ride. So, here we go.
Ooh. Three of them slide right in. So far, so good. See how the other side looks. Nice, too good. All them, right in. So, you do have to make a little spacer. You can see right there, about 5 16 on both sides. We'll square that guy up perfect. Um, let me fix that down there. Grab the other piece here. Oh. All right, here it is. This is essentially what it's going to look like. So we got to get this cat piece on this side we got some uh, bolts we gotta just make a little a little clearance for on the bottom side but I think it looks pretty good actually so uh, we're waiting on some five in five eighths five eighths five sixteenths flat stock kind of like this um, make that spacer get that all squared away get some different I think we're gonna get some grade 8 a little bit longer of a bolt and some washers all it came with was bolts and a, just regular nut not even a crimp nut or anything so sure we'll get that squared away but I think it looks pretty good I really like this deck plate I like this system it's it's a lot easier than uh, some we've had in the past, some I've dealt with in the past. Um, yeah, I think right now I'm going to grab them other channel pieces and clearance those so that's done. And then I'll probably grab the plasma cutter, cut me off a couple chunks of this, and finish those, uh, finish those plates for the spacers. Then I get the front end done, and yeah, we won't have to worry about that anymore. Um, so, here we go.
there it is. Pretty cool system, like I said. So we slide the rail on. Sitting on there now. I think you're gonna look pretty good. Once we get it all clamped down and where it needs to be. Uh, like I said, we need some 516s for in here. Need some new bolts. So just kind of mocking it up. Frame still has to be blasted and painted, but as of right now, everything looks really nice. Set these off the side probably, and uh, they will probably be ready for final assembly later. We just want to make sure they fit before we go through all the trouble of blast and paint and everything. Now I'm going to go back to this, figure out what I needed to cut off, and get the plasma cutter, cut them, and uh, that way I can finish up the front. So let's do that. Okie dokie, uh, you guys saw me doing that one. Uh, I didn't use the plasma cutter like I said. Use the chop saw, already put it away. Got the other one here. Did that one off camera. Letting it cool off. You know, grind it a little bit, make it look a little nicer. Um, I got the other one over here in the paint booth. Slapped a coat of paint on it before we put it in there. Um, so I was kind of waiting for that to dry up a little bit. It's a nice tight fit. But I uh, figured I'd just do a little update. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this one off. Get it painted. Get the other one installed. Um, and then I will probably pick the camera back up. And we will go to the parts table over there. And see what we can do next. Okay. Got the front done. Figured I would uh, give you guys a look at it. So, you can see it in there. Kind of takes up that space. Left a little room in case we need to level it up. Turned out pretty good. Accomplishes what they wanted. So, think now come over here to the parts table and they wanted a new shifter more standard shifter to what you're used to seeing nowadays I guess I don't like that other one some of you probably recognize that just a standard 13 speed shifter. So, I already got some wrenches up here in the cab. They want to get rid of that one. So, uh, like I said, got some wrenches up in there and take them airlines off, label them, and we'll pull that out. And it's got that little, uh, Got this little piece 
Might have to clock it a little bit different. That new shifter will be a little taller, so might get it set right a little better, more comfortable. Um, I'll find a place to put you guys up in there. You can watch me. Uh, I think Trent did a video early on about this one. He put a, the shift, took the shifter extension off, but essentially it's going to be the same thing. So throw you on a little time lapse and we'll get her swapped out. All right, what is up, everybody? Um, Freightliner here. I was going through some of the footage to get home this weekend to edit and everything like that. Um, I noticed I talked about working on the shifter, and I never filmed anything on it. Um, it's all fiberglass and aluminum. Our GoPro's on a magnet. Couldn't really find a place to coach you guys, and then kind of ran into issues with it. Um, so it had that older factory style knob. It only had three airlines. That new 13 speed shifter we wanted to put in it has four. So did a little research, try and figure it out. Um, I got it in here. I got a new airline run separately. So there's four lines. Looks nice, goes through the floor. Um, I looked at Wayne kind of got the same shifter it's not the same trans but it's a 13 speed um, I ran a whole new airline for it it's this nicer one here in the loom we uh, if you can see that T down in there that silver T hang on right there had to add that in line that's how the one on Wayne's done I don't know if it's right. I don't know if it's wrong. Um, we're just gonna have to wait till it's running. I mean, you hit the switches, they make noise. Um, the high and low definitely works. I'm not sure about the uh, splitter for the top. So, not really sure if anybody knows, you know, any any advice on that. Or if we're just wasting our time, maybe let us know down in the comments. Not sure what trans it is. Um, it's kind of the side set up here. So, could clean it off, look a little more. I know the one on Wayne's and Eaton. I'm not exactly sure what this one is. So. We'll see how it goes. We'll wait till it's till we get tanks back on it. We got to run it a little more. We saved all the old stuff, so if it doesn't work, we can always put it back. So it's a little update on the uh, shifter thing. Hey there, and welcome back, guys and gals. Working on the Freightliner here. Ooh, might have been a little sneak peek there. Um, we got the steel in to kind of take this space up here in the goose mount. I got it over here. Just got a small piece of it. Got her marked off at 10 inches here. Got a mark scribed. I'll cut this, do another one, scribe it. And then uh, Put it over there, fit them up, square them up, mark the holes, drill the holes, and then we'll uh, get them in there, get them tight. That'll be mocked up. We know that will be good for later on when we do assembly after it's been blasted and painted. So I'm going to throw you guys on time lapse and get that knocked out.
Hey there, everybody. How are we doing? We are working on the Freightliner still. Uh, you just saw me drill some of these holes. Drilled eight holes here in the uh, little side panel here. Because, like I said before, they put a different axle in this thing. Somebody did. It sticks out a little bit. So they wanted some flares. So we bought some of this material online. Got them up in there, got some clips. I can show you over on my toolbox there. Fit really nice, look good. Not too bad looking. And yes, you might have noticed that new bumper. Look at that bad boy. A little drop bumper. 16 or 18 inch, can't remember for sure. Had some holes put in it. That's what they wanted. Kind of matched the cab lights up there. So that'd be cool. Pretty nice looking bumper. But it's been a couple days. Uh, Trent had the camera, he was working on the van. I think where I last left off with you guys, I was doing the goose spacer pieces. I uh, got them over here. They turned out really well. The hardware we had was long enough. Just got to get some uh, lock washers. But they fit on there really good. And I've also been digging into the wiring. So the wiring back here, I'll show you, is pretty hacked up. Been up in here. Trying to figure out what's going on. Um, there's no turn signals in the rear. There's brake lights and running lights. Um, so I've been trying to figure that out. Why there's no turn signals. Um, also, you know, we put the uh, LED ones on here. And they blink real slow. Well, they don't even blink unless they're on uh, unless they're on the four ways, and both of them are pulling amperage. And then the flasher will work. So we have a we have a new flasher coming. It's one rated for LED for the lower amp draws. And obviously, someone's been in here before um, with the turn signal switch so I had to trace these wires down we can go to the other side also tell someone's been in here before because yeah it's a uh, it's like a home electrical box in there so that's really cool um, there's also another one out here Some people shouldn't be able to touch wiring. Um, Here's some more, you know, wires just a couple inches short. So, you know, just make a jumper, no connections. Just twist them together. Not insulated butt connectors. Well, they're insulated. They're not heat shrink butt connectors. Just, it's a real nice job. Wires just cut. Cut and left bare. So, it's been a daunting task so far. It's not the worst one ever, but it's not the best. But basically, I had to come in here, figure out where the turn signals come in, where they go out, which one's for which. Some of these older trucks, some of you guys know, some probably don't. They're all the same colors. There's no red wire with a green tracer, blue wire. It's all white. But you can kind of see they have numbers on them. So that's convenient, I guess. This right here 
is where someone's wired into that household box in the back and yes believe it or not there's wire nuts all over it so that's really good um i wouldn't suggest wire nuts for a truck i mean i guess they're good enough for your house right but these rattle jump do everything down the road so on top of that getting done or looking into part of the exhaust if you remember Here's this bell. And that's like an open joint. That's so the cab can tilt. So the cab can tilt and that elbow can stay in one spot. And it gets lower down on it, makes a connection out the out the top. So it's also got a little leaf spring here. That elbow mounts to it. And then this mounts to this. Hold that elbow. It keeps upward pressure on it, right? So when that comes down, it sits on it. Cab comes down, sits on that elbow, puts a little pressure, spring holds it up into place. So we're doing dual exhaust. So we had to make some for over there. Got a local spring shop, got some spring steel. <coughs> Excuse me. It just came in one piece, one long piece. Measured them, made it the exact same. Cut them, drilled the same holes. It's got the same bracket over there. Bingo, bingo. So now we got the spring for the other side. Got exhaust in the mail. Elbows in the mail. Of course, like everything else, it's a, you know, a week wait. <laughs> a week, I wish. Um, it's like seven, eight, ten weeks. Whatever. Um, is what it is. So that's all on its way. So that will be upcoming videos. But for now... I'm going to mount up these flares on the other side. Looks pretty good because that bumper kind of, the bumper's a little bit wider. So you can see, kind of looks ugly, sticks out. Wheel, tire stick out. But over here, definitely looks a lot better with a little bit of flare on it. So, pretty awesome. Um, I think I'm going to finish that flare up, get it on, and then, then I'll probably be going to work on some trailers here. Never ends. Um, got to keep the business going, you know. Here's these little clips I was talking about. <clears throat> I believe they're Kenworth part numbers. Really expensive. These little guys, you wouldn't think they would be. But they are. You can kind of make that out. It's just a little piece of aluminum bent, broke. Some nuts and bolts. So, we're going to get this other flare on. And, uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep going on it today or not. So, here we go.
And there you have it. A nice looking fender flare on this truck. I think it turned out really good. Hug the body nice. Keep the uh, debris from flying up on the paint. Saw me kind of contour it there. Looking too good. I like it a lot. Them clips are from like a uh, some of the like heavy haul T8s, like dump trucks and stuff. They have fender flares. So that's the uh, Kenworth number. I don't think I said that. So, well, there you have it for today. I think I got to move on to other stuff. So, uh, leave us a like, leave us a comment. What do you think about this thing so far? Um, things you might do, things you wouldn't do, things you like, things you don't like. Uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. So, we will uh, catch you guys in the next one.